news you can use. Now, I get a lot of questions about where should we focus our housing business? Uh, where's the place, play, best places to go? Um, one of the things that I haven't really talked about much is affordability of houses. And I think it's important when you understand the affordability of houses, um, you'll, you'll see how that can affect maybe where you ought to be looking to do this business on a virtual basis. Uh, affordability is simply can people who are beginning home buyers um, afford houses in that particular area? In, in this case, I'm going to talk about it, it's a state by state ranking. Uh, Market Watch just came out with a deal a couple of days ago. It said, um, in fact, there are only three states nationwide where more than half of the households could afford to buy a median priced new home. So you you want to be in an area where most of the people, and there's unfortunately there's only three states where most of the people can afford to buy a new home. Um, but I, even with that said, you want to have a higher home buying index possibility rather than a lower one. So what I would I'm going to tell you is the three states that have the most affordability uh, per average income, and then the ones that have the least. I'm going to start off with the least. These are the areas where I'd recommend to not. Um, do this business or kind of stay away from if your exit strategy is to get with a first time home buyer, either have them buy your house, lease option in your house, that kind of thing. The, um, the actual least affordable state, the worst state in the nation probably to do this business from an affordability standpoint is the state of Vermont. Only 16% of the households could afford a mortgage payment on the average median priced house in that state, which is roughly 476000 by the way, California is not going to be on either of these lists, most or least. Uh, neither is New York. Connecticut came in second with the least affordable places to live. Only 21% of all households are able to afford the uh, midline, mid price, um, uh, middle range house. And the third worst state in the country to, in my opinion, do business would be Wyoming at 23%. Only 23 out of 100 people could afford the average house payment in the state of Wyoming. Now, the three best um, to deal with are, surprisingly, and once again, the three best are the only three where over 50% of the population can afford the average price house. So I would really focus on, on that if you can. Um, and then the most affordable state in the nation. In fact, you know what? I'm going to, before I do that, have everyone put in the chat, what do you guys think it is? What Any guesses as to what the most affordable? Just go ahead and put your note in the chat and let's see who gets who gets it right. We'll, uh, if anybody gets this state correct, um, you get the, the brownie points for today. I'm going to change the view while you guys are doing that so that I can see the gallery view. Here we go. Much better. All right. Um, go ahead. Put the chats. We have one guess is Kentucky. Uh, Lance is guest Oklahoma, Justin, Kansas, uh, Brenda says Missouri. All right, anybody else? Come on. Uh, Patrick guesses Mississippi. Let's see, Mercedes guest Kentucky. Uh, Alex said Florida. All right, guys, we're going for the most affordable house. Any other guesses before we close it up? Joseph says Oklahoma. Uh, any other guesses? Kayla says Texas. Alex Alexander says Alabama. Last call. I can tell you right now, you guys are 100% wrong. There is nobody who has guessed this correctly. The more, most affordable state in the nation, I, I should have made a big bet on this because I don't think anybody would get it, but the most affordable state in the nation is the state of Delaware. 69% of the population can afford an average priced home in the state of Delaware. Second best, you're going to probably be surprised at this, and the, the third most affordable. Second most affordable is the state of Maryland. 57% of the population can afford a house in Maryland, and the state of Virginia, 54% uh, can afford. And by the way, once again, those are the only three states in the United States where over half the population can afford to buy an average price house. So obviously, those are going to be good states to do business in. Um, I don't have the entire list of all 50 states, but if you can probably be at 40% uh, on and above or 35% and above, 
Uh, if somebody can get a hold of that list, uh, you can take a look. And actually, I do have the list. No, I don't. Uh, maybe I'll get that list for next time if I can find it. We can talk some more about this. But, um, you know, it's and that's relative to the average price house in that area. It's not per nation price. So the state of Delaware, 64 percent or whatever it was, I told you, 64 percent said or said they could uh, can actually afford the average price house in that state, which is actually fairly high price. So um, that's a, those are good markets to be in. All right, um, we're going to go next to um, words and phrases uh, that are helpful out there in the marketplace, kind of uh, hacks that can make you stacks. We talked last Thursday night about two of them that you should always ask your sellers when you're talking to them on the phone. First one was, why are you selling this lovely home? We, that's a standard one that we always use to get, and that will get you the motivation that folks are you know, what is the real motivation? Gee, it sounds like such a wonderful house. Why in the world would you ever want to sell it? Second one we talked about last Thursday is how much, by the way, how much did you pay for this house when you bought it? Because once again, it's better to ask that information so that when somebody's asking 400 for a house that you're planning to probably pay only 300 for, it's better to have them say, I only paid 110 for it and it was 20 years ago. It's easier in your own mind to drop down to 300 when they paid 110 than it is from 400 to 110. So I would definitely um, be using that every chance you can. How much did you sell? Now here's two new ones for tonight. Um, always ask the folks after they give you an asking price, besides the, the number one question of, is that the best you can do? Whatever they say, you always say, is that the best you can do? Or can you do, can you do better? Can you do any better? Always ask after that, how was that asking price determined? How did you determine that price? Um, most times they're just going to pull something out of their butt. And it's something that, you know, is along the lines of my neighbor's house sold for that and blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> um, it's important because you make them realize when they say it comes out of their mouth, you're going to make them realize that they don't really have any reason any reasonable reason to suppose that that should be the the real price of the house. They just, you know, friend told them, neighbor sold a house, blah, 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 blah. It will also help you when you go back to talk to them about why they're asking too much. It will, it will give you uh, a good reason to talk to them about that. For example, if someone says, well, the house down the street sold for 170. Okay, great. And then when you go back, you can look that up and you can say, yes, it did sell for 170, but six months before that, it sold for 80 and it needed work and it was sold to an investor who fixed it up and then sold it for 170. Now, is your house in the same condition as that other house is today when it was sold, totally fixed up, totally cherried out, that kind of thing. So once again, it puts them in their own position of questioning the, the numbers themselves. In some cases, they literally just pulled out of thin air. Um, that's uh, question three that I would ask. And the, the fourth one, this is a real uh, nuclear bomb that you can throw out. I suggest you use this later on in the conversation. If you're trying to work somebody down on price and they become intransigent and they won't move, you ask them, hey, have you prepared, have you already prepared your written disclosure statement regarding everything that's wrong with this property? Um, that is a really powerful thing because most states now require upon transfer of a house, even an arm's length transaction between directly to seller, they require that the seller disclose in writing anything known uh, or suspected that's wrong with the house. And if they haven't prepared it, which I can guarantee almost all of the people who sell by themselves have not prepared it, Almost everybody who sells to a realtor before it ever gets on the market will have prepared it. So, you know, these people think when they sell a house themselves to you guys that they can skip all the rules. They think that gravity doesn't apply to them. They can do whatever they want. Um, that will show them when you explain to them, as you're aware, most states have a written disclosure requirement. Now, there are a few states that don't, but it's safe to say that the vast majority now require in writing that you disclose known defects. The, the violation of one of these written disclosure statements, as you folks on the call who are real estate agents know, is a fraud charge. If you deceive a seller knowingly in writing, 
you don't disclose something that you know or suspect, you can be charged with fraud. And it's, it's okay to tell a seller that, you know, we, we do it to prevent fraud. The government believes this is an important thing for all of us in society to have as a, as a check, as a measurement to prevent fraud, because what's to prevent you from just telling me there's nothing wrong with the house. And I find out later on it's laden with mold in every wall and, you know, there's a hole in the roof and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you ask those two questions. Um, once again, this is all designed to get the seller softened up and to get you a better deal. So that's um, word hacks that will bring you stacks for tonight.